Welcome to another Fear No Fix video. Today we're going to be showing you how to diagnose your catalytic converter issues. A catalytic converter reduces harmful emissions coming from your engine. Some of the most common symptoms of a bad cat may include reduced engine performance, poor fuel efficiency, maybe a rattling noise coming from around the exhaust, lots of heat coming off the exhaust, maybe you're smelling something like a sulfury rotten egg smell, and also you might fail your emissions test. This is probably one of the most common reasons people fail. Also, there are a number of codes associated, but by far the most common is a P0420. We're gonna go ahead and scan the car now and see what we find. To start our catalytic converter diagnosis, we're gonna use the live data from the Blue Driver. To do that, we need to get the truck up to operating temperature, so I'll go ahead and do that first. While you're waiting for your vehicle to get up to operating temperature, you can go ahead and set up your Blue Driver app with the live data sources that you'll need. You'll need the engine cooling temperature sensor and the oxygen sensors related to your vehicle. Some vehicles only have one bank of sensors, while other vehicles have two banks of sensors. Just pull in the oxygen sensors that are available to you. We're up to operating temperature, so let's go ahead and look at our data. As you can see, our oxygen sensors are now starting to report data. We have two banks of sensors in this vehicle, so I've color-coded them to make them easier to see. We'll focus on this top set. Our sensors are reporting in voltage. However, your sensors may report in milliamps or in lambda. The units don't really matter, but the behavior of the data is what does matter. The top sensor, or sensor one, is pre-cat. It's before the catalytic converter. And this helps the engine maintain a good air-fuel ratio, and it fluctuates based on that ratio. Sensor two measures the efficiency of the catalytic converter. That should stay relatively stable throughout the running of the engine. As you can see, our sensor one is doing quite well. It's moving up and down, regulating the air-fuel mixture. However, sensor two is jumping all over the place, sometimes not reporting data, or not staying stable like it's supposed to. We suspect that this means that the catalytic converter on bank two is probably gone, or that the sensor is bad. What we'll do next is we'll go to the catalytic converter and do another piece of diagnosis to see if that's our problem. Another way to assess the health of your catalytic converter is to have to look at your inlet and outlet temperatures. If your cat is good and healthy, then the outlet is going to be about 10% hotter than the inlet. We're going to be measuring this using this infrared thermometer. If you're lucky and you have a newer vehicle, you might be able to get this data through the live data in a scan tool, but we're going to show you the manual hands-on way. Depending on your vehicle, your cat might be underneath about midway along the exhaust, or it might be further up in the engine bay, some front wheel drive, four cylinder vehicles, it might be just behind the radiator. Additionally, if there's a heat shield over your cat, you might need to kind of squeeze around it. You wanna make sure that you're measuring as close as possible to the cat. Otherwise, your temperatures might not be exactly accurate. All right, let's get started. Now we're getting our outlet temperature as close as we can without measuring the heat shield itself and we're not quite getting 10%, so our cat may be bad. All right, so to summarize, if your outlet temperature is less than 10% higher than your inlet temperature, or it's lower than your inlet temperature, that's bad. If you're hitting the catalytic converter, you can hear something rattling around inside, that's really bad. And if you've got both, then that's extremely bad. Your catalytic converter is probably bad, and now it's time to replace it. If, however, these tests passed, but when you were looking at your O2 sensor and the live data, the data was suggesting there might be something wrong, then it might be an O2 sensor, which we'll cover in another video. Hopefully the steps we've just showed you will help you find the cause of your issue, and you'll have no problem passing that emissions test. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. And until next time, fear no fix.